Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, I've been asked this a long time, and quite often. Is that even a proper way of saying it? No. I've been asked many times over a long period of time, what's my favorite battery? And that has changed over the years. So, uh, as I've said before, 30 plus years ago, when I first started living off grid, uh, my favorite battery was the first one I had, and that was a Sears Die Hard, one of those, uh, you know, 12 volt, about 100, maybe 120 amp hour battery. I wasn't running too much solar, but I was just so thrilled in the beginning that a, a simple solar panel and a simple battery could work. And, and uh, so, yeah, the very first one, Sears Die Hard, that was my favorite. And then the longer I was off grid and the longer I lived on the sunshine, I started uh, using more and more things and hooking more and more things up. And then the powerhouse back then was the Trojan L16s. These are all lead acid batteries. And that thing was a beast. Uh, and I got 10 years out of a bank of L16s, Trojan L16s. They were spendy back then, and I'm sure they're still spendy now, but I don't ever want to have to try to carry one of those lead acids ever again, and we've all gravitated now towards lithium iron phosphate. I've reviewed a whole bunch of them on this channel for you guys and been asked many times, which one of these do you like the best? And I've always said the same thing. You know, they're all working quite well, which is true. Never really had a problem with any of them for the most part, which is true. And the ones that ever did have a problem, I showed you guys that, but I could not pick out which one might be a favorite. And now that I've been on lithium iron phosphate for four years, I do have a favorite. And it's not the Trojans anymore, although these, <laughs> I just haven't even lifted these out of here, but uh, these are some old Trojans, good batteries for lead acid, very good. Uh, these are not very good anymore, but I, I cranked some years of life out of those. But it's all lithium iron phosphate right now, as you guys know. And I've got a few of them. But one shines for me. So I've got several different brands and several different sizes. Right here is the Red Odo Mini. I mean, look at the size of that thing. You can just about palm it. Love that battery. And here's another small one with a Bluetooth feature, which that's kind of nice. You got their 300 amp hour 12 volt. That's the big boy. Got the Time USB. Can't say enough good things about Time USB. Never had a problem. Here's another one. Been in production ever since I hooked it up. No problems. And then back here, my original babies, the Chins. Never had a single problem. These are the ones I've been running the longest, over four years now. Uh, never had a blip on the radar with those. Nothing. They just do nothing but work as they should. And the only thing that I've really added to these, that, you know, it's not really necessary. I mean, it doesn't affect any of the, you know, usage of it whatsoever. But, you know, I put in a shunt. And, and here's the shunt. So I could have a a real good indicator of what we're used to for a state of charge. I mean, I could look at the Victron app, but we know we don't want to really chase voltage around to know what your true state of charge is. So on most of my systems, you know, I did add the shunt so I could look and see like this one, 60 some percent full and charging. And that way, just at a glance, I always know what my battery banks are looking like. And, you know, it's in great shape. But yeah, these were kind of a necessity for me when I first started, and I still love them as having a, a real clear indicator of where is my battery bank, you know, because we know with the flat discharge curve on lithium iron phosphate, you know, the whole time it's discharging, it can be reading 13 too, and we never, I never knew what that truly meant all along the line, but then you put in, you know, what we're used to seeing, like a, a you know, a real gas gauge, <laughs> right? And this was very helpful. And I put it on most of my systems. I've added the shunt. So over the years, when you guys have asked me, what's my favorite one? I could say, man, I just didn't have a favorite because they were all working so well. And they still do. 
you know, whether I've got four years on them, three years, or a couple of years, they're all working just fantastic. And the only thing I really had to do for me to always know where they were as a state of charge was add that shunt. So you guys might be knowing where I'm heading with this. So even though I've been running a lot of these batteries for several years now, my absolute favorite, I haven't been running for that terribly long. And it's definitely my favorite, and I'll tell you why. And it's that bad boy there from Vatterer. 48 volt. 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, built-in shunt, built-in display, and of course, 48 volts, you know, and I've showed you guys all of the parameters and stuff that it shows on here, you know, 100% full, of course, so I didn't have to hook up any anything to this. Today marks two months exactly from the day I dropped this in which is one of the reasons I like all of the batteries. They're just a nice drop-in replacement for what was lead acid for me back in the day. Super easy, I already had some existing systems. All my lithium iron phosphate batteries, I could just drop into place real easy and get them up into production. But it's this, this feature here. So I've got 700 watts of solar tied into that battery. Uh, it works fantastically as it should. But it's having that built-in shunt and display unit, which for me, personally, makes it better than the others. And it, of course, the 48 volt for running all my high wattage uh, kitchen utensils, coffee maker, air fryer, George Foreman grill, all the stuff that I like to run where some of my other systems won't run that. I could on some of them, but the 48 volt just shines above the 12 volt and the 24 volt for doing that. Now, I love all of my systems. I've lived on 12 volt for the majority of my existence off grid, but these newer 48 volt server rack style batteries, which I've only had a couple. Uh, one I've showed you guys, we'll still dig into that at some point, failed on me, but this one so far just two months in and it goes right to the top of my list as favorite battery of everything I'm running out here. And I will say that as much as I do love 12 volt, and I'm so used to working with that over the years just for its ease um, in my understanding, and, and it's how I started. So I was slow to gravitate towards other voltages. 24 volt was the first one I ever went off of a 12 volt system with. Uh, if I was to do it all over again, and I was gonna try to run like my house, I would just start with 48 volt. I really would. Uh, it's not any harder to put in at all. That one was just as easy to drop in and hook up and get up and running as anything else. But for a household, and, and supplemental household or entire household, if I was starting all over with nothing, I'd go straight to a 48 volt system. So all of those shunts that I showed you that I've installed on the 12-volt the systems and that 24-volt system, the one thing they don't show, now they're really good at showing state of charge, and I love them for that. They don't show individual uh, cell percentages. Like a lot of you guys building your own systems, putting your own BMS in, you have that advantage of seeing what every single cell is saying. And so you can monitor your build that way. That's the one thing that that batterer has, and I'll show you that again here in a second, as well as the cycle life. Like I've been running some of these for years. I don't truly know how many cycles I've put on them because it doesn't keep track, but the batterer does. So I'm two months to the day of running that battery. And this morning it showed eight cycles and I'm using that every single day. Some days pretty good. Some days not so much, but every single day I'm throwing some high wattage devices on it. Start every day with coffee machine, you know, pulling 1200 watts, um, cooking at night with an air fryer, a grill, all high wattage stuff. As I mentioned before in a previous video of what constitutes a cycle, it's just not, it's not the days that are ticking by that are a cycle, you know. If you're not, you know, drawing it down, 
all the way and replenishing all of its capacity, even if that takes days to do, that would be a cycle, right? We've, we've gone over that before. So that's the one thing I never truly understood and still don't on all of my existing systems. How many times have I cycled those batteries? I don't know. And just as a comparison on the cycle life, so this 300 amp hour uh, battery from Red Odo is currently uh, tied up to this system here, my upside down 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. You know, I've got uh, four, I think four or 500 watts. I'd have to go out and count the panels. Maybe 500 watts going through there. But when I woke up this morning, this thing was on 92%. The only thing it's running right now is a five cubic foot freezer and has been for months. So it's at 100% full right now and you can see I'm in absorption. So it's just hanging out at 14.2 volts, which we know. And now it's 100% and even though the nights are warmer, the days are warmer, and that freezer is cycling on a little bit more. You know, I wake up 92% full. So just as soon as the sun hits those panels, right back up to 100% full. So that doesn't count as a true cycle, right? It would take days and days and days of drawing 8% down of the battery's capacity before it would, you know, register as a true cycle. And then jumping back to the vatterer here, you know, here's the display. It's got a little app and I've got that on my devices as well. But everything that you need to see is accessible right here just with the push of a button. I really like this. There's my battery voltage. You know, um, I'm in float right now. Panels are not really producing much. As you can see, there's zero current coming in. So I just reached a full charge and it's just settling now. Uh, I've got the ambient temperature, 82.9 degrees. That's very accurate. I think that's exactly what my thermometer reads in, in this room right now. So everything's correct there. On page two, that's what I like to see. Two months, used it every single day for two months, 60 days now. And I have had nine cycles on this. And then this is the other great thing that unless you're building your own system on page three, there's your cells. Any cells acting up, 3.5, pretty much straight across. It shows you any deviation you might have, but look at that. That's great. It gives a little different color for the one that has the most discrepancy. You can see that three, four, nine, two, and nine, three jumping back and forth a little bit, but everything's three, four, nine, all the way down, all 16 cells. This is the reason this is my favorite battery, is to have all of this built in. All my other batteries work fine, no issues whatsoever, but it's this information that I like. And a lot of these Server X style batteries now are coming with all of this kind of information. I've only ever had two Server Rack batteries out here. Uh, this one, the, the first one was that Power Queen, which is dead in the water right now. Did not have any of this kind of functioning here. But that's what I I like, and that's why of all the batteries I'm running, and I love them all, this is my favorite. Absolutely. And of course, I will continue to run that battery every single day because I rely on it heavily now. But yeah, like I was saying, if I was building a new system for the house, it'd be the server rack style batteries. Um, they're still uh, relatively cheap, you know, hovering eight to a thousand dollars a piece for most of them and you know the 48 volt charges up so fast it's so efficient uh, you don't need the heaviest gauge uh, wiring for all of it it's, you know the list goes on and on but 
Yeah, that one quickly went out of four years of using these batteries and loving every single one of them. Where in the past, I just said, you know what? I can't choose, choose a favorite because they all work as they're supposed to. Uh, and this one works as it's supposed to, but it's my favorite. So I meant to say $800 to $1,000 is kind of where I'm seeing uh, those server rack batteries hover around in price range. I haven't seen any uh, drastic changes recently. I'm still seeing them in that price. So, yeah, I guess I do have a favorite now. <laughs> and I racked my brain before in the past trying to, you know, say like, oh, this one's better, that one's better. But they're all doing just fine, every one of them. So regardless of your needs, guys, I mean, lithium iron phosphate is still the way to go. Uh, till the next new thing comes along. But yeah, I'm very happy with all of them. Very happy. Uh, but I, for my personal purposes, I like having all that information built in. There's nothing else for me to hook up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that video. As always, I enjoy bringing them to you. So all righty. Have a great day, everybody. Get you on the next one. Just putting in some steps here. Feels good. Yeah. Feels good. You guys rock. Very patient crew you all are. <laughs>